Trinity Baron Church because he teaches us about God's love. God loves us completely. The little bear didn't ask you if you deserve a hug. He didn't say, did you clean your room this morning? Did you get good grades in school this week? Did you obey your parents? The little bear just gives, them, gives you a hug. Pass him around. That's how God's love is. God loves us completely and totally, no questions asked. God doesn't say, I love you if you're a good boy or girl. God says, I love you. God says, I love you to all of us. I want you to remember that always. If somebody in the world tries to tell you that you aren't loved, you can say to them, I know I am loved because God loves me. God loves us always and forever. The Bible says that God loved the world so much that he sent, he gave his only son, Jesus. You read that in the fourth book of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then Jesus lived on the earth for 33 years, and he loved us so much that he opened his arms and hung on the cross so that we could live forever. And that's what we're celebrating today. On Friday, we remembered that Jesus died on the cross. And it was very sad when Jesus was on the cross. But if we look at a cross with Jesus on it, we notice that his hands are open like he's hugging the whole world because he was paying the price for our sins and loving us so much that he would die for us so that we could live forever in heaven. And when Jesus was on the earth, he said to his friends, I want you to love one another. That's what Christians do. Love one another. Love one another. So, we don't run up and down the streets hugging everybody, but we love one another by treating them with respect and dignity. In a few minutes after I talk to the grown-ups, we're going to renew our baptism vows. And among those questions and answers, there we talk about how we love others, by respecting them, by praying and working for peace, and by treating everyone with dignity and justice. So love one another. Remember how much Jesus loved us and how God loves us always. God loved us so much he gave his only son Jesus to the cross and then Jesus rose from the dead on the first Easter and that was the great gift to us for eternal life. Do any of your children here this morning have a birthday this week or this month? In the month of April. Ready? Lisa. 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 Who's Lisa? Is this? Is your birthday this week or this month? This month. What day, Mommy? The 11th? 26th. 26th. And how old will you be? Six years old. Great. Could you help me by handing me that there? Thank you. Vasa would like you to have a little bear for your birthday. Happy birthday. Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem, that's the city where he was when he died. He was born in a little town called Bethlehem, yes? Yeah, the temple, he went to the temple in Jerusalem very often. What country was that? Was that Florida or California? Was it Kenya? Where did Jesus live? Well, actually, when Jesus was alive, they called it Judea. Then it was called Palestine. Today it's called Israel. Israel. You read about it a lot in the newspapers and hear about it on the news because the people who live there are fighting over the land about who, who it belongs to. It's very sad. They do a lot of killing there. Israel. And in Israel they grow a lot of olive trees. You all know what olives are, right? The olive trees grow to be very, very big and very, very old. When Jesus was alive, he used to go to this, like, park, a garden. It was all full of olive trees called the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane. And he would go there because it was cool. It was a little, up on a little hill. There was a cool breeze, and he would kneel down and talk to God. Pray. That's when he and God talked. There is a tree in that park, because it's still there today, that is gigantic, so big I couldn't get my arms around it. And scientists have studied it and tell us that it is 2,500 years old. It was there when Jesus was alive in the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, sometimes those trees, you know, lose a branch or they have to tear down an olive tree to build a house or a road. And Christian people who live in Israel, because Christians live there and Jews live there and Muslims live there, Christian people who live there take the olive wood and carve things out of it, like the cross over your altar or like a manger scene we would put out at Christmas time. Or, these little crosses, which are made out of olive wood from, Ju from Jerusalem. They have a tiny hole in the top, just big enough for a piece of thread to go through if you want to make a necklace out of it. I'm going to give each of you one to remind you of how much Jesus loved us so much that he opened his arms and died on the cross. And could you help me uh, put your name in the picture? Could you help me by passing them out on this side? And how about you? Could you have one this side? Great. Now, after the service, my friends, Archdeacon Jim Lay, who is here, will have extras for you. So anyone can have one, or if you have children at home. You can wear them around your neck, you can put them by your bedside table, you can carry them in your pocket. They will break if you ride your bike and fall off. Fall off, and they're just wood, they'll break. But uh, they're yours to remind you of how much Jesus loved us. So much. He opened his arms, hugged the world, hung on the cross, so that we could live forever. That's what Easter is all about. Thank you for listening so nicely. Remember to love one another like God loved us and Jesus taught us to love. And remember always, always that God loves you. Never let anyone tell you that you aren't loved. Okay, thanks for listening so nicely. Son of God.
rose from the dead, the day on which all our faith is built. To believers, the resurrection of Jesus is the surest sign of God's unconditional love for us sinners. A wise woman once said, never place a period where God has placed a comma. Never place a period where God has placed a comma. And that is so true today, my friends. 21 centuries ago, Jesus' disciples thought that their story had come to an end. Their master had been hung on a cross, crucified and died. They placed his body in a tomb, and they went on that first Sunday to anoint his body because they believed it was all over. When his followers and friends got to the garden tomb, they discovered that God had put a comma where they thought there was a period. Because the body was no longer there. The story was not over. Jesus Christ had risen from the dead and conquered death and the grave. The rest of the story would unfold on that dynamic day as the resurrected Lord appeared first to the women and then to the disciples. And no one, no one could believe this electric news from the graveyard. It must have been so stunning that it was unbelievable. And it took some time for them to get their minds around what it really meant. Of course, that meant that a comma was placed in our lives that day too. As humankind was given the gift of eternal life, the grave was no longer the great period of life. God was not finished at the graveyard, and our lives are not finished at the cemetery. That's what we're here to celebrate today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Throughout time, there have been people who believe that life ended at death. You may have heard of the great actress, Sarah Bernhardt. She lived back in the last century, and she kept a coffin at the foot of her bed so she could see it without effort every morning when she woke up. She explained, this is to remind me that my body will soon be dust and that my glory alone will live forever. But you see, Bernhardt's understanding of faith told her that life would end at the grave. But there was no legitimate hope of life after death. And what a tragedy. No wonder people yearn for some way to cheat death if their belief system tells them that it's the end of the line, that it's all over. Easter puts a comma where the world would place a period or an exclamation point. And that's why we rejoice this day for the deep mystery of God's love. Easter reminds the world that God was not finished that day on Calvary. Death and despair and evil would not have the last word. And dear friends, nothing in the world has changed that. There are so many naysayers and doom-tellers in our world today, but Easter reminds us and them that God's merciful love never ends, and that God will never abandon His children. Each of the four Gospel writers puts a different perspective on the first Easter. It's not surprising. Think of the impact that the resurrection had on the lives of Jesus' followers. 
Never again would they think of death in the same way. Never again would they put boundaries and limits on God or put a period where God promises a coming. And this is the good news of Easter, my friends. Those who went to the tomb and found it empty came to know that death had been conquered. Jesus' teachings were validated. Nothing again would ever be the same. A fellow went out on an all-day fishing expedition, way beyond the boundary waters, out in the sea. He didn't catch a thing. His fishing expedition was a bust. But he was enthralled by the sunrise and the sunset over the Atlantic Ocean. He'd never seen the entire horizon as the sun came up and later that day as the sun went down and the rapidly changing colors were awe-inspiring. He had his camera with him and he took lots of pictures. But when the pictures came back, he made a discovery. He could no longer tell which of them were of the sunrise and which were of the sunset. They all looked the same. Because of Easter, death is like that for believers. For some, death seems to be the end. The end of a life, the end of a relationship, a time of great sadness, a sunset, if you will. But for those who believe in Christ, death is a sunrise, a new beginning in the nearer presence of God. In the past few years, a number of people very close to me have died rather suddenly and unexpectedly. And the loss and the pain almost seemed overwhelming until I remembered that Christians are the Easter people and death is the doorway into eternity and never-ending life in the nearer presence of our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Easter changes our perspective and outlook about death. It changes the meaning of life. Dusk becomes dawn. Life becomes a walk in a fragrant, beautiful garden. And the resurrected Jesus now invites us to join him in the Eucharistic banquet. Our Savior and friend invites us to partake of his body and blood to be fed for our journey and glimpse a moment of paradise until we experience our own resurrection. To receive the manna which will sustain us for the journey on earth until we come into the presence of the risen Lord for all eternity. Easter changed the punctuation marks of life forever because we will live forever. And what great and good news that is. Never place a period where God has put a comma. The disciples discovered that the period they placed where there should have been a comma would become the exclamation point of resurrection. God was not finished then, and God is not finished now. Back in the 1970s, a Christian man and woman wrote a beautiful song that some of you may have heard. I think it says it all for me this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he is risen.
junto. Christ the Son of God. 